name we pray that there will be no distractions that will distract us from hearing your word. It is your word that gives life. It is your word that produces life. We thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45. Verses 18 to 22. Isaiah 45, verses, verse 18 to 22. For thus said the Lord thou, for thus said the Lord that created the heavens. And made it. Thus said the Lord God that created the heavens, and God Himself that formed the earth and made it. He has, notice this, established it. He created it, not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Let me reread that. Thus said the Lord God, thus said the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it, he hath created it, is not in vain. He has formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord. I have not spoken in secret in the dark places of the earth. I said unto the seed of Jacob, Seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Assemble yourself and come, draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations that have no knowledge. Set up the wood of their grave image and pray unto God that cannot save. Tell you, bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together who have declared his this from ancient times, who have told it from that time, have not I the Lord? Is there no God else besides me? Is there no, is there no God else besides me? A just God, a Savior? Is there none? Beside me. I, I, I want to reread that. The latter clause. Hear what the eagle eyed prophet now lifts and say. He says, From ancient time, who have told him from this time? Have not I the Lord? Have I not the Lord? Is there no other God besides me? A just God? A Savior? There is none besides me. But I text. Look unto me. Look unto me. And be saved. That all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. Let me read you that. Look unto me, not unto Nathan, not unto Mark, not unto Patricia. But look unto me and 
and be saved. people 
I am God. There is none else. I'm really glad that God is God. Amen. So, so, Lord, He first sets up the vastness of God's creation. See, salvation can only be imparted by the principle of Nobody else can give you salvation but God. He is the principal owner. He can do it because everything you have and everything you are, God made you. And that's why this morning, each one of you in here ought to open your mouth and tell the Lord thank you. And have not been for the Lord on my side. Where would I? God, God alone, Brother Mary, God alone, God alone, He alone, He alone can offer salvation. No one else can give salvation. Only He alone can give salvation. All day I want to lift up this concept. What is the totality of salvation? What does it mean to be saved? Because there are a lot of people who go to church really don't know what it means to be saved. In the mid 1800s, one of the great preachers of the 20th century, Charles Spurgeon, preached this sermon. And when he preached this sermon, he said he preached it out of his own experience. He said, when I heard these words uttered by a preacher, he said, it literally pierced my heart to understand that I live in the world that he made. That I live in the world that he presides over the universe. And no matter how bad and how worse things are, God is still in charge. And as wretched as, wretched as I may be in my presence, in my words, he loves me that he will save me. Now some of you have given up on a whole lot of folks. You've given up on some hardened criminals. You know, can I let you in on something? Each one of you are wretched. I'm going to say that again. I know you look good, smell good, and in front of me, you act good. But all of us got an ugly part. They call it the hidden darkness. All of us got some darkness. And some of us got more than others. Some had a great deal. But over time, we have allowed the light of God to dispel the darkness. But we're not completely in the light. Because when my when I would do good, come on, help me, somebody. Evil is always present. How many of you will confess when you would want to do good and when you would want to say good? Somebody that old most good, did you call it the devil? I don't care who you call it, but somebody always coming your way, trying to push your button, and somebody did push your button for you to say the wrong.
invite the presence of God. And, and let me tell you something, you don't have to congregate the move of God. I listen to some musician. He said, I'm going to help you. I'm going to get him going this morning. I'm going to get him going in this service. And some of us play into that. Some of us want to get happy when the, when the, when the, when the B3 is cranking up. The bass are off and the drums are going and there we get happy. But you know what? I don't need that. When I think, just get me by myself and let me think, come on, help me somebody, of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul. Have you ever been by yourself absent from music and you just begin to think and, and tears start flowing and hands start going up and somebody asks you, what's wrong with you? You say, I'm just having a moment. It's just a moment. It's just a moment because God did this. Nobody else, I wish I had a church in here. Nobody else can heal my cancer. Nobody else can heal my disease and my tumors. And nobody else brought my child that was way with back. Only God did it. And he deserved the praise. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise. God is not an emotional outburst. Salvation is not an emotional outburst. Fall. Salvation is not a demonstration of charitable works and goods. Because you're charitable doesn't mean you're saved. 1 Corinthians 13 says, Do I give my body to you? And have that love or charity is perfect to love. Salvation is not a demonstration. Are you getting anything out of this? A charitable work of goods. Number five, salvation is not a systematic knowledge of God and his creation. It's not a systematic knowledge of God. I took systematic theology in school. I took biblical theology in school. I know a whole lot of folks who are trained preachers, who have taken preaching as a profession versus a vocation. There's a difference. Professional people are hired. People are people who are in a vocation. It has become their life practice. And when I can't do no more than what I'm doing because I've been called to it. Woe is me if I do not fulfill my calling. Nobody has to in the morning on Sunday. Come on, they can get up. You got to go preach. Oh, when I have a preacher to get, get up there, you got to go? Hello, somebody. You know, some of you work jobs and you just dread. But I don't dread when I got to preach. In fact, I, I look forward to it. Because there, in my preaching, I feel fulfilled. I am fulfilled in which that which God has called me. Perhaps the reason why you are not fulfilled is because you're not operating in your calling. You operated in somebody else's call, but it ain't your call. That's why you got to be careful when people advise you and tell you what you ought to be and what you ought to do. Because you end up being frustrated and being angry at yourself because you're not fulfilled. If you know you're fulfilled, lift up your hands and thank God for my fulfillment. This is what the text. Number six. What salvation is not. Salvation is not a good person. You're going to be a good person. But not saved. A lot of good people. They're good Jews, but not 
not saved. They're good Muslims, but not saved. They're good Hindus. They're not, because, they don't, because they don't accept Jesus Christ, you can't write them off that they're bad people. They're good Buddhists. But they're what? Come on, talk to me. They're not saved. They're wonderful to your witnesses. I 
exchange of death for life. I'm excited about that. That he would not come down from the cross to save himself. But he stayed there just to save me. Are you glad that he didn't come down from the cross? He could have came down from the cross and changed the whole story. But he stayed on the cross. I know I'm preaching in this church. Well. Number four, salvation is the power of God at work. Not a shame of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Do you know that scripture? Yeah. Huh? That's Romans 1 16. Put it on board, then come back. Put that up. Romans 1 16. It says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is what? Come on, let's read it. Come on, let's read it. For I am not what? I can't hear it. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone believed, to the Jews first and also to the Greek. The gospel is the power unto salvation. The way you get salvation is you got to get through the gospel. Number five, it is the complete forgiveness. I want you to know when you say he has forgiven you. I don't care how bad your past has been. When you say he wipes the sake clean. Stop, listen, sleep. Stop, stop, stop celebrating people's past. And then those person, when they celebrate your past, stop being remorse over your past. Because it is your past that brought you to your present. And when they bring up your past and steal you, your past in your faith, you say, just a minute, there's more to that story. You just only know that story. But let me tell you the new story. When I gave my life to Jesus Christ, baby, you thought I was on fire then. I'm really on fire. He changed me around so much that my hands look new. My feet look new. My thought process is new because I've been saved by his blood. Salvation 
is to save. It is to help in distress. I'm about finished. I am. It is to rescue. It is to deliver. It is to set one free. Salvation in the New Testament is described as the mystery of God that is now being revealed. It is the mystery of God that is being revealed. Salvation in the New Testament is a plan conceived before the foundation of the world. Salvation in the New Testament is the light of the resurrection to the Gentiles and to the, to the Jews. Salvation in the New Testament is a transition from life to death. Salvation in the New Testament is a message especially for sinners. Salvation in the New Testament is a gift of God's grace through faith and not works. Salvation in the New Testament is about the whole creation groaning towards God. Salvation is the revelation of God, righteousness to faith and for his faith and for our faith. Salvation is what we need to get what God has for us. So let me go and say these words. Can I say a few more words? Look to Jesus. Oh my God. Can, can anybody help me now and tell somebody, look to Jesus? That's the word. Look. Can, can anybody help me and just say that one more time? Look to Jesus. Because can't, 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 can't. I feel something pushing me. I feel something pushing me. Because can't nobody do what Jesus can. And, oh yes, 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 yes. Isaiah, the prophet said, looking to Jesus for our salvation. Now, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be the type of person to Bust anybody balloon. But uh, Barack Obama can't give me salvation. There were a million plus men, women, and children who went down to the nation capital and was on the lawn listening to the honorable minister Farrah Khan, Louis Farrah Khan, but he can't give me salvation. We've had some wonderful civil rights leaders, Martin Luther, Booker T. Washington, yes, uh, George, 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 all of the civil rights leaders. We've had some wonderful men who have given themselves, but they can't give me salvation. But uh, there is a name. Y'all not having that. There is a name. <laughs> That's above every name. Yeah, there is no other name greater than this. I'm sorry, I'm just slow in my preaching. That there is no other name except the name of Jesus. And whatever you need, grab somebody and say, God, I've got it. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, God has whatever you need. And if you call
Yeah. <laughs>